from googly-eyed lemurs to camouflaged geckos and chameleons, about 90% of the species in Madagascar's forests are found nowhere else in the world. Earlier this year, I visited a pioneering project in Madagascar that's aiming to protect one of the country's few remaining forests. But this isn't just about saving species. It's also about curbing global warming. Deforestation is responsible for about one-fifth of man-made greenhouse gas emissions. So the idea is that in the near future, richer nations will pay to keep Malagasy forests standing, and in return they'll gain carbon credits to help offset their own carbon emissions. It's hoped that projects like this will stem deforestation across the tropics. But to succeed, these projects must overcome the poverty and political upheaval common to most developing countries. Madagascar may be rich in biodiversity, but its people are very poor and depend on exploiting the forests to survive. At sunrise, in the tiny village of Andaparati in northeastern Madagascar, people load their slim produce into a dugout canoe to be taken several hours down the river for sale. The main crop here is rice, and to grow it, farmers slash and burn away the margins of the forest. Barnetti, a village elder, is watching the scene. When he was a boy, there were only a few families here, but over the years, the village has grown to hundreds of people, putting even more pressure on the surrounding forest. The Wildlife Conservation Society is leading a project to protect the forest around Andaparati in order to trade its carbon on the international market. To make sure the forest stays standing, the society is offering the local community alternative ways to make a living. They're working with villagers to increase rice production on existing fields and kickstart ecotourism in the area. Projects like this are popping up around the developing world in anticipation of the United Nations Climate Conference in Copenhagen this December. The aim of the conference is to forge a new global climate deal to replace the Kyoto Protocol. Rainforest nations like Madagascar hope that this deal will support a carbon trading scheme that will compensate them for protecting their forests. For the carbon trading scheme to work, first, the forest must be measured. I followed the Wildlife Conservation Society team deep into Makira Forest to see how they make their carbon calculations. The first step is to measure the carbon stored in a small sample of trees and leaf litter. Later, they extrapolate the data to cover the entire forest. The second step is to work out how much carbon could be saved if the project reduces deforestation, and therefore how much carbon can be traded on the carbon market. But in a country plagued by poverty and political instability, it's almost impossible to guarantee that a certain amount of carbon will stay locked up in a forest. A military-backed coup earlier this year, for example, led to a surge in illegal logging and a lot of unforeseen carbon emissions. In the long term, it's hoped that carbon payments from richer nations will filter down into local communities and lessen their reliance on the forest. But right now, this village in Madagascar seems a world away from reaping the much lauded rewards of carbon trading. <laughs>